All right. Lesson four. We're going to, in this lesson, we're going to look for, we're going to, well, in these lessons, in, in this, this multi-part lesson here, we're going to figure out more and more ways to specify and drill down and find what the zeros of a polynomial function are. Remind you one more time that zeros, what that means, we're talking about the x-intercepts. It's what, it's what x is whenever the y part is zero, right? So let's start by learning the rational zero theorem. This is kind of our first stop on getting more and more specific and finding our zeros without just kind of punching stuff in a calculator and hoping the technology works like we expect it to, right? So the first thing is the rational zeros theorem, and it says all this mess. Basically, if you have a polynomial function, right, that's, that's what all of this stuff is, right? This stuff right here says function in the form of this. So a polynomial function with a degree gra n greater than 1. So the n greater than 1, so it's not a constant function. It's not a function that's a straight line, right? It's some sort of polynomial something. All right, that's what that's saying. It has... <coughs> uh, in, uh, something happened here. Let me pause and fix whatever that word. Obviously, integer coefficients. My brain just couldn't thought I'd probably put some wrong letters. It just I wasn't getting there. Integer coefficients. So all of these a sub n, a sub n minus one, a sub n minus two. All of the coefficients, all of these in front of the x terms are integers. If they're all integers, so no decimals, fractions, anything like that. And a sub zero, a naught, is not zero, so it has a constant term. Now, if it doesn't have a constant term, then odds are you can probably factor out one or more x's out of everything and force it to be in that form. So we can probably deal with this through a little bit of factoring. But uh, the rational zeros, the ra so fractional zeros, not necessarily complex ones, <coughs> of f, they have the form of p over q, where p is p is an integer factor of the constant term, a naught, so that last term that doesn't have an x. Don't worry, we're going to do some examples, put some meat on this, make it make sense, right? And q is an integer factor of the leading coefficient, so that front term, that one in front of the very, very highest function. They also can have no fat common factors other than plus or minus one, right? Uh, let's do an example and put some meat on this this mess here to see what's going on. So here's our first example. We're going to list all the possible rational zeros of this function. And then we're going to determine which, if any, are in fact zeros. So <clears throat> in this case, P is this end term here. So P in this case, let me change colors here real quick. P is negative 2. What are the factors of negative 2? Well, plus or minus 1 is a factor because we can divide 1 into this, or this can be divided out. We can divide out and get a 1 from it. If we divide this by negative 2, then we end up with this, right? So whatever we get here, we can divide, whatever can be divided into this thing is the factors, right? We can also divide negative 1. These are always until we get more specific later, these are always plus or minus, right? So plus or minus one, and then we can also divide two in there. And that's it. That's all we can get into this num this this last term, which is handy because prime numbers means less factors to divide, and so it makes less time, and hence doing it in, as an example. Now, the Q is the leading term right here. So that would be this guy right here. Now, there's nothing there. If there's nothing there, what's there? It's a one so Q, the factors of Q are plus or minus 1. So all the possible zeros would be all the divisions of P over Q. Now, that's easy if the leading term is 1 because we only have these options. So it's this divided by 1, which would be just this, and this divided by 1, which would just be this. So all the possible factors, P over Q, are plus or minus 1, and plus or minus 2. Whoops. Minus 2. So those are what the possible zeros are. Now, then next it says, then determine which, if any, are zeros. So how can we find out if these are zeros? Well, we're going to use the, the remainder theorem from the last lesson. 
<coughs> that we learned, and we're going to divide these things. So we just got to start picking some stuff and using synthetic division to see if we can find if any of these things are zero. So let's start with the easiest one. Let's start with a one. Let's let's divide this. We're we're dividing this by x minus one, right? Is what we're doing we're taking all of this and dividing it by that that's ultimately what we're doing right that's that's what's happening right that's what that 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 uh theorem from the last lesson says that we can do if this works then this is a zero of the function x minus that's that x minus c thing so we list all our our coefficients one and five and negative four and negative two and divide it, bring that first one down. One times one is one. Five plus one is six. <coughs> one times six is six. Negative four plus six is two. One times two is two. Negative two plus two is zero. Look, we found one of the zeros because our remainder is that zero, right? If the remainder comes out zero, then one, in fact, is a zero. So we can factor our f of x. Uh, let me pause. Let me get a, a pale gray or something. All right. Back back to doing things. So what we know so far are, is that f of x, we can factor it into this first factor, this x minus 1, right? Now, again, this is this is where caution you I, I caution you if you're in my class I caution you in class and if you're watching on the video and hopefully I've made that video by now I'm cautioning you in the video this in this case this this is a zero which to put it back into the factored form it's gonna the sign flips right it's that x minus c right so the the c is the is the zero and so this negative if is gonna be in there as well so one x minus the zero which in this case is one right and then this one, right? So this would be x squared. This this first one is always one less than this, right? So x squared plus 6x plus 2. So now let's see if this factors. <coughs> if it does factor, if, if it does factor, then it's probably going to factor into one of these or, or something, right? So let's see. Does it factor? I get the the practiced among you are already screaming at me right the only things that can do two are two and one and that doesn't give us six in the middle so this doesn't factor anymore so there aren't any more rational zeros the only rational zero is a one so all the possible ones are this and the only one the only rational one is this there might be this there's either gonna this could either give us some other real zeros that are irrational right that's that might be true or maybe there's some complex ones if you if you shove this in your calculator you could be able to tell what is going on here right and all all of those things let's do one more example i think one more example yeah there it is oh my goodness so many things that is what we want this we're just going to trash. I don't know what happened there. All right. So same thing. We're going to list all the possible rational zeros of this guy and then determine which, if any, are in fact zeros. So in this particular problem, P is 8, right? If you want to think about it as plus or minus 8, it's it's just this. But, but if you want to think about it that way, because all of the possible ones are going to have plus or minus on them, because of the way integer division works. You can get pluses and, and minuses out of either one. And then Q, in this case, is 3. So what are the factors of 8? Well, plus or minus 8. Plus or minus 4 is 1. Plus or minus 2 is another. And plus or minus 1, right? Those are all the, fa all the different factors of 8. What are the factors of 3? Well, just three and one this time. So this one's fairly straightforward, but it's a little little bit less straightforward than the last one because in this in this case, we don't have just one option for Q because Q isn't one this time. This time it's a three, right? 
All right, so we need to list all the possible ones. So all the possible ones are this over this, this, this over that, this over that, this over that, and then the same things with the ones, right? So let's let's I'm gonna list it kind of backwards of the way I wrote it here. I'm gonna kind of write it in in numerical order for not because you have to, just because our brains like that. I, I listed this backwards because I was kind of breaking it down into the next smallest one. So the order on, on some of this stuff doesn't necessarily matter. It's just how we did it. So one over one is plus or minus one, right? And then two over one is plus or minus two, <coughs> etc. Four and eight as well, plus or minus four and plus or minus eight. <coughs> Hmm, my goodness. And then the other, we're going to go back over here. So one over three is one third. So it could be plus or minus one third. Uh oh, we got fractions happening here. What do you want to bet that at least on the homework, at the very least, some of the actual ones are the fraction ones. You got this. You can do it. It's not going to be a problem. Four over three and plus or minus eight over three. Of course, if any of these fractions, as you were listing them, if any of them reduced, you'd want to take care of that. None of these do reduce, but if they did, you would want to reduce it. So it's worth worth mentioning as well. So now we got to try to find out if any of them are. So we don't have any other ways to narrow stuff. So we just kind of got to YOLO our way to what we're doing. So let's try one first again. Cross our fingers. Hope it works. One. And then we'll list our coefficients all from up here, right? So 3, negative 7, negative 22. That's kind of big. It's no big deal, though. We got this. 22, 8. Bring down the 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 7 plus 3 is negative 4. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. <coughs> negative 22, this is not looking good, is it? Negative 22 plus negative 4 is negative 26. That's not going to cancel. This is not going to work. So we could jump to something random or we could come back over here and try negative 1 or we can just try any of them. We're going to learn some ways to, to narrow this a little bit further later, but, but this is the best we got for now, right? So we're just going to try stuff. So let's try negative 1 this time. See if that works. Negative 1. Helps if I actually write the numbers, doesn't it? And then 3, negative 7, negative 22, and 8. Let's see if this works. So 3, bring down the 3. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 7 plus negative 3 is negative 10. Negative 1 times negative 10 is positive 10. <sighs> negative 22 plus 10 is negative 10. 12 that's not going to work that's not going to work at all so what should we try next i'll pause you can put in the comments what you think it is uh we could try two did you guess two but uh, let, let's let's try negative two I, I have an inkling i have i have an inkling i just and in, in case you're confused about what i'm saying i i know that the answer is negative two and so i'm gonna for the sake of time I'm going to jump to trying that. If I was just do if I was you at home and on your homework, I probably would try two next. You know, if I didn't know if I was in this lesson, I didn't know any other better, easier, faster ways to narrow stuff down. That's probably what I would do. I, I mean, I might YOLO and try one of the fractions, but I don't know. Let's try negative two. If all, if all goes well, then all is well. Negative 22, eight. All right, let's see what happens. Bring down our three. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. By the way, if you, from your Algebra 2 class, if you're if you're one of my students, from your Algebra 2 class, uh, no faster ways to do this, you can do it. Also, I'll also throw this out there. I'm kind of walking through this like we're not allowed to use graphing calculators on in this class, but of course we are allowed to use graphing calculators in this class, at least in my class. And so... Um, you can also narrow it by just pulling out the graph on your graphing calculator and be like, oh, it looks like it's at negative two. And then confirming it with your algebra, showing myself or your math teacher 
that yes, I do know how to find it even if I don't have the tool. So we just confirmed that yes, in fact, negative two is a factor. So let's see what we would factor this into. So this would be G. Now this is gonna be a little tricky, right? So what we just divided this by was we divided by G minus negative two. So not G, X, and so X plus two is what we divided by. So this is the factor this whole this is the factor that we divided by, which we showed that this was a zero, right? I know I'm, I'm stressing that, but I, I don't want you to get confused because depending on what you're doing, sometimes the sign flips and sometimes it doesn't. In this case, this is what we're doing and this is what we're getting, right? So we have turned g of x into x plus 2. That's this one that we just discovered, right? Times, and then this would be one less than this, so 3x squared, right? <coughs> minus 13. I almost pointed like this, but you can't see me doing that. So right here, this guy, minus 13x. These are just going in de decreasing order. I know for following along in videos and things, I, I continue to say the same things over and over again, but... I find that that helps. So we need to see if this can factor. It looks like to me that it does. Let's see, do you see it yet? Let's find out. So the first slot would be three X and X because three times one is three and X times X is X squared. So three X and X. Now four, we could do two and two, but that's not gonna work. Eight and two is not gonna give us 13. So that's, that's not gonna happen. What about four and one? If we were to do four and one that still doesn't work because then we've got four and we've got three and we can't get negative 12 out of that but as you maybe already saw maybe already figured out if we do instead of four and one if we do one and four that works because we've got a one and a 12 minus minus follow our nose and our mouth doesn't matter because they're both negative. Then we can see, we'll, and we'll compare this. We'll, com we'll, we'll see our, our factored version here. X equals, or this equals X plus 2 times 3X minus 1 times X minus 4. So our factors, and remember the, we, it would flip the sign. So our factors, the ones that actually work, are negative two, put this in orange as well, negative two, and this one would be positive one divided by three, right? Because if we did three X minus one equals zero, we would add one and then divide by three, right? So one third. If you want, uh, by the way, if you, if you, when I do stuff like that, if you're like, <laughs> then you certainly can go back and do the Algebra 2 versions of these same things. It's the same content, just in a slightly different lesson structure. So if you find the lessons, my lessons on in the Algebra 2 class, it's the same sort of stuff. So if you need something that goes just a wee bit slower, that's one way to get it. There are also other people on the internet as well. Then this last one would be positive four, right? Positive four. So the possible ones these were possible the ones that actually are rational zeros are these and this one we definitely found all of the zeros because there there can be three because it matches the degree right the other one in our last example there was only one rational one we don't know how many real ones there are because you don't know how to find that out yet we'll we'll see that soon and very soon that's it for this one in the next one we are going to look at at kind of a way to narrow the top and bottom and narrow the range and maybe cut off some of the higher ones and some of the lower ones and, and, and focus on where those zeros are. So I will see you in that lesson. Adios. Bye-bye.